Welcome to my presentation on electrical load schedule. By the end of this video, you are going to know what an electrical load schedule is, how to compile the electrical loads, and calculating the operating and peak loads. Okay, so what is an electrical load schedule? Well, an electrical load schedule can be defined as a document that embodies the total electrical load within the plant. It is used to determine the amount of power required for an installation in terms of active, reactive, and apparent power, measured in terms of kilowatt, KVR, and KVR respectively. A load schedule is usually categorized by the, a switchboard or by sub-facility or an area. Now, why is an electrical load schedule calculation carried out? The electrical load schedule calculation is carried out to properly size electrical equipment, conductors, and to determine the protection and control system. And when do we do the calculation? Well, electrical load schedule should be started as soon as practically possible. The calculation can be started with a preliminary key single line diagram and any preliminary details of process, building, or facility load. This load schedule will give an early estimate of the total power consumption. From this, the number of generators and the utility intake can be estimated. Let us now see the basic steps which we need to follow when creating an electrical load schedule. First, we need to collect the list of expected loads in the facility. Then for each of these loads, we need to collect the electrical parameters, namely the nominal and absorbed power, the power factor, and efficiency. After this, we need to classify each load in terms of switchboard, the load duty, and the load criticality. As a next step, then we need to calculate for each of these loads the expected consumed load. Finally, based on the expected consumed load, we calculate the operating power and the peak load for each switchboard and the overall system. Let us Try to understand the electrical load schedule with a worked out example following the steps described in the earlier slide. To start with, we need to collect the electrical loads of the plant. For our example, let us consider a small facility with the loads as shown. 2 into 100% vapor recovery compressors, 2 into 100% lube oil pumps, 1 into 100% sump pump, 2 into 50% fire water pumps, 1 into 100% HVAC unit, 1 into 100% AC UPS system, 1 normal lighting dB, 1 emergency lighting dB. In this connection, it may be noted that the loads indicated here are indicative only for explaining the load schedule calculation. Once we have the preliminary list of loads, we need to collect the electrical parameters like the rated power, the absorbed power, the power factor, and efficiency of these loads. Now, rated power is the full load or the nameplate rating of the load and represents the maximum continuous power output of the load. For motor loads, rated power corresponds to the standard motor size. For loads that contain subloads like distribution boards, the rated power is typically the maximum power output of the item with all the subloads in service. Absorbed power is the expected power that will be drawn by the load. Most loads will not operate at their rated capacity but at a lower point. For example, Absorbed low motor loads are based on the mechanical power output to the input to the shaft of the driven equipment at its duty point. The motor is typically sized so that the rated capacity of the motor exceeds the expected absorbed load by some conservative design margin. Where information regarding absorbed load is not available, then a load factor of between 0.8 2.9 is normally applied. Now, power factor is a load of the load is necessary to determine the reactive component of the load. And efficiency 
accounts for the losses incurred when converting electrical energy to mechanical energy or any other form of energy the load outputs some of the electrical power drawn by the load is lost usually in the form of heat to the ambient in environment where information regarding efficiency is not available estimates of between 0.8 to 1 can be used next we need to classify each load according to their duty as either continuous intermittent or standby load continuous loads are those that normally operate continuously over a 24 hour period examples of continuous loads are process loads control systems lighting and small power distribution boards and ups systems intermittent loads are those that operate for only a fraction of the 24 hour period examples of intermittent loads are intermittent pumps automatic doors and gates and standby loads are those that are on standby or rarely operate under normal conditions like fire water pumps and emergency system after classifying each load according to their duty as continuous intermittent or standby we now need to categorize each load according to its criticality as normal essential or vital now normal loads are those loads that run under normal operating conditions like normal process loads normal lighting and small power distribution loads normal office and workshop loads etc while essential loads are those that operate under emergency conditions that is when the main power supply has failed an essential supply is by definition an economic matter examples of essential loads are emergency lighting key process loads fire and safety system etc and critical or vital loads are those that are critical for the operation of the safety system and for facilitating evacuation from the plant and would normally be supplied through a ups system critical service by definition is a safety matter examples of critical or vital loads are safety critical shutdown system escape lighting etc the next step is to calculate the consumed load for each of these loads which is basically the amount of electrical power that the load is expected to consume accordingly for each load we need to calculate the active and reactive power to be consumed here you will notice that the loads have been categorized into three columns depending upon their load duty that is continuous intermittent or standby this has been done in order to make it visually easier to see the load duty and more importantly to make it easier to sum the loads according to their duty that is now we get the sum of all the continuous loads sum of all the intermittent loads or the sum of the standby loads which will be necessary to calculate the operating and peak loads in our subsequent slides once we have the sum of the continuous loads the intermittent and the standby loads we can now proceed to calculate the operating and peak loads many organizations have their own distinct methods for calculating the operating and peak loads the operating or load or the total plant running load tprl is the expected load during normal plant operation as can be seen from the formula operating load is calculated as 100% of sum of all continuous loads plus 30% of sum of all intermittent loads whereas the peak load or the total plant peak load tppl is the expected maximum load during normal operation peak loading is typically infrequent and of short duration occurring when standby loads are operated for example during the changeover of redundant machines testing of safety equipment testing of fire water pumps etc 
Now, peak load is calculated as sum of 100% of all continuous loads plus 30% of intermittent loads plus 10% of the standby loads. Based on the formula discussed in the earlier slide, we can now calculate the operating and peak loads. In our example, the operating load works out as 326.8 kVA and the peak load works out as 362.76 kVA. Normally, we calculate the operating and peak loads for each switchboard and one for the overall system. During the early stages of the project development, an allowance of 10 to 20 percent is made to account for an increase in electrical load to take care of the uncertainties in the process design. This allowance is normally reduced at a distinct project phases as the design develops and the details of the electrical loads are crystallized. In the earlier slide, we saw how to calculate the electrical load schedule. Let us now summarize the benefits of an electrical load schedule. The load schedule gives at a very early stage of the project an estimate of the total power consumption during the normal as well as during peak loading. From this, the number of in-house generation as well as the utility intake can be decided. This load estimate also helps us in selecting and sizing of the electrical equipment and the control and protection gear. It enables the design to cater for future loads. Also by understanding the load and when the peak consumption is likely to occur, it is possible to implement a power management scheme that ensures that the load is average most of the time and eliminates cases of alternating between very low and very high peak consumption periods. With proper power management, it not only brings down the electric bill charge at peak times, but also benefits the generating company which can now generate less energy. And that wraps up my presentation on electrical load schedule. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in case you have any question. If you would like to see more such videos on electrical topics, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss a thing.